Hello everybody, and happy Valentine's Day, all of you great lovers in the audience. Today I wanted to walk you through the process of how I upcycle clothing, all with a nice romantic Valentine's Day theme. Everything in this video is going to be beginner friendly, so if you want to hang out with me today, get in the mood, and watch how I develop some of these outfits, definitely stay tuned. Today's video is sponsored by Cousins Collective. Cousins Collective has provided a lot of the patches and pins you will see in today's video, as well as this beautiful overhead tripod equipment update. So thank you Cousins Collective. I have been shipping their products for years and years, and Quicken has always been a code on their website since I believe 2016. It has been active, so check them out if you would like, and if you feel inspired by any of my looks, by all means, go ahead and take them. Anyway, let's get into the first look. Hey everyone. So our very first look is this romantic, kind of cool, kind of modern denim jacket. So I really like the texture of this jacket. It's kind of two-toned with two different types of fabric. It's really neat. So the theme I'm going to follow with this jacket is black and white. So I have all of these black and white theme patches from Cousins Collective. What's great about these patches is there are instructions on the back as well. And these patches come with a little piece of tape on the back. So I have my jacket standing up on the wall and I'm just mocking all of the pieces in place where I want them with the little tape on the back. You may have also noticed the little devil pin from Cousins Collective as well that is also black and white. I think when all the patches look the same it looks more purposeful so I like the theme. It's less like hodgepodge and more like consistent and thoughtful. So I have my iron going and I'm just going to iron this entire jacket, starting with the collar. I want it to look nice and fresh and stiff just so everything that I place on the jacket is perfectly straight because other than this step, I don't really use many more measurements. Everything is kind of just eyeballed. So prepping my area where I am going to put my patches is just as important. So first I'm starting with this scorpion patch which is so sick. And kind of following the rules of tattoos, I have the scorpion facing inwards. You can see I'm ironing on with this t-shirt. This is kind of like a good test to see if the fabric you're ironing onto is strong and won't discolor under heat. Because this is denim, it's pretty strong, but I just wanted to test it to make sure. Also, if you're working with a patch with a lot of detail and you're rubbing your iron back and forth, you can kind of mess up the patch, so it's good to have a little barrier too. But here I test the denim fabric and realize it is okay to put the iron directly on it. Later in this video though, I do iron something that I shouldn't have, so I kept that t-shirt part in. You may have seen in the beginning I mocked this chain link on the back, but I decided it would be really cool and unexpected to put it in the pocket. So I split the patch in half and ironed on half of it first making sure the pocket could still open. And then you see I kind of put my hand in there so the two pieces of the chain link sneak snug inside of the pocket and then I continue ironing. I think that this effect looks really cool and I like that all the details are on the front of the jacket. So the last part of this jacket is kind of this fun I don't know, friendship bracelet kind of customization that I'm putting at the bottom of my jacket. I think it would also look really cool on a sleeve. But I just found my name, my letters, you can pick whatever letters you want, and I'm just threading them onto this black thread on the needle. For the sake of demonstrating, I put them all on the needle, but if you are doing a couple words or a really long word, you just pull the needle through so you can still loop these through. Kind of like this. 
Next, you pull the needle all the way through like I explained. And then push the needle back through the fabric so that the little letters stay snug, the letter beads. A thimble might help if you're working with denim like I am. Next, to just make it secure, thread the needle through again. And you can do this as many times as you need to, depending on the fabric or the area of your jacket you're putting this. Like if you're putting this on your sleeve, I recommend going through and looping through a couple of times. I show a different angle if this is a little confusing. So just making sure you are getting it through that same similar hole, just so the beads kind of stay in the same exact pattern. Like I said, loop the needle through a couple of times. If this seems daunting, it was actually really easy. And it's right by my pocket, so I can kind of fiddle with it, spin it around. It's actually like a lot of fun. And it follows the black and white theme, so it is super cool. I think if you plan out your jacket and make it look purposeful and follow a theme, even if the theme is loose, I think it just looks much more clean and thoughtful and, dare I say, aesthetic. I thought that this was very romantic and cool and kind of forbidden love, so I went for it. Next, for my Valentine's Day outfit, I am using lingerie as a top. I've always wanted to do this, so I went for it. And I would say it was pretty effective. Next, I have a skinny little belt, and you can see my brawl let's be honest but i thought that this was kind of cool i've seen more smaller chest ladies kind of going for it so i wanted to go for it too and why not while i'm feeling brave on valentine's day next i have this a-line skirt and a little beret because romance and i really love the way this outfit came together i think the denim keeps it kind of punk and it's really just my style but elevated and because this jacket has such purposeful patches and things like that i think everything looks careful and well thought thought out and romantic next is this bag the story of this bag goes like this i've wanted this bag and it's been sold out and pretty hard to come by and this is an all cap studio bag so I've been looking for this bag for a while and my friend Heidi has it and you may have seen me even asking to borrow it online and I realized my friend Nick also had this bag. So he posted about it and Nick is a friend of the channel, you may remember him. What do you call the, what do you call the heater in your house? Radiator. That's right. From my Spencer shoot. But Nick actually had a second bag. His first one got kind of damaged and I asked if I could trade it. So I traded him for a box of Girl Scout cookies and I ended up with this all cap studio bag. So the bag has this cut in it and some other stains and different various amounts of damage, but I wanted this bag and I thought it was so cool for Valentine's Day and it's an indie creator, just like all the other creators in this video. So I thought it would be so fun. So thank you again, Nick. You are a dreamboat and amazing. So I have this sewing kit and I decided to use the color red. Although I have cream and black, I thought red would be a really cool juxtaposition. It'll stand out, it'll look mended. And I think that taking something that may have been broken or stained or ripped and repurposing it is exactly what I love. So I used a red thread to kind of show that this bag has been repaired, but it is loved and sought after and just really, really cool. So to get stains out, I used Dr. Bronner's soap. Dr. Bronner's is so good at stain fighting. And I just did a little bit of a pre-treatment and then I soaked the bag in hot water 
for maybe like 20 minutes and then I just let it hang dry. And here's the bag. It turned out so cool, so I paired it with my damaged little vans, and I think that is so super special. Styling it for my Valentine's Day look, I love the severity of my previous look, so I put this button-up shirt with it, this linen button-up shirt to make it more street, and I think it's just super cool. This jacket is a mod look, a romantic look, it's so cool. Next is this pretty pink Sherpa jacket. So this canvas Sherpa jacket I've had for a little while, but the jacket, I just don't trust it. It doesn't fit quite right. The buttons kind of fall on my chest weird, so they look like nipples. I The jacket is very wrinkled, and because I have wider hips, the jacket actually can't button all the way on me. Just where it falls on my body. And so I really wanted to decorate this jacket so I could really love it. And I've honestly worn it three times since, so very effective. So here are some buttons and patches I'm adding to the jacket. To keep things cohesive, all of the buttons I'm using have a gold trim. Here I am just mocking up the jacket, and like I said, the jacket pockets are the worst. So instead of embellishing the pocket, I'm just ignoring it and putting the pins in a little cluster. I think clustering your pins with intention looks really cute and less like scattered all over the place. You know, following a theme, even if the theme is just all of the pins have a gold backing. Next, I have this patch, and this is a handmade patch by the creator Angel Spit. So I'm actually safety pinning this patch on because like I said, I don't trust this jacket, so I would prefer to take the patch off if I'm going to wash it instead of sewing it on. And because this is a handmade patch from a creator, I just wanted to play on the safer side. So ironing my work area flat, this patch, so this patch is really super special. I had this patch printed at a Stephen Powers free art show, I guess you could say, event. And I brought a piece of canvas. A lot of people brought t-shirts, but I thought it would be really cool if I brought a piece of canvas with me. So you will see here that I have a canvas, one of a kind screen print from the Stephen Powers printing event. Because this is a piece of, I guess, rare art. I, do, I don't want to sew this directly onto the jacket. I want to make sure I can take the patch off every time I wash the jacket because it is hand screened. I do trust that it would wash, but I just get nervous because, you know, anyone would get nervous. So to protect this patch, I am ironing it in the shape of the area in which I would want the patch to be. Because it is a thick canvas, it holds all of the seams that I'm creating with the iron. So I'm just creating a flat area. And once I form my creases on the jacket, I'm able to take the patch and further create the creases that I want, all of them having a little lip. So with safety pins, I can go in and pin almost invisibly by pinning onto the lip. This is a lot of fabric and I admit I would probably need much more safety pins to make this kind of more flat because it is pretty thick canvas already. But I knew this was a cute theme for Valentine's Day. Together we melt the ice. So even if this is just temporary, I think that it's so cute and so fun. And then afterwards I can put it back in a frame. Stephen Powers is an artist from Philadelphia, so having this patch is pretty special walking around the city. People recognize it and they really enjoy it, so it was a lot of fun. So to style this look for Valentine's Day, I use layers. Underneath my shirt, you see that there is a pink thermal, and then I have a pink pocket tee with shippo on it. 
Styling pink on pink on pink is such a mood and I felt invincible and romantic and happy and just super cute. I styled it with these baggier trousers to add masculinity to this primarily feminine look and then creepers to give myself height and again ask, add some masculinity to the look. Like I said, the jacket does not button in a flattering way, so the thermal underneath the shirt keeps me warm, and I think it's a super cute look! It's one of my favorite looks on this whole thing! I kept the raw edge of the patch on the bottom, you can see in this clip, and everything looks so cute! So here's our final look. So I have this Sherpa jacket, and I've had it since last year, and this whole year I have not reached for it. I don't know if it's because it's trendy, or just blah, or how it falls on my body, but I wanted to change that. So following almost a monochromatic scheme, I used all of these muted colors to just add life to the jacket. I have this handmade patch that I've been using as decor, and what a perfect time to sew it to my jacket as well as this pin that also follows the same kind of muted color palette, which looks really well paired with this jacket color. So I hand sewed the patch on with a cream colored thread, and I thought it might be kind of cool if I add this little patch on the inside of the jacket. I did burn the lining of the jacket with iron. <laughs> Obviously this would be just for me to see, but I think it would be cool because the patch says lucky and it's a lucky cat, and it's been in my patch collection for a while, so I think it's perfect there. Next, I put the snake pin opposite on the collar. I think it looks intentional, and it's not in the way. It's still impactful. I like it. The blush of the snake woman matches it perfectly, so I think everything being in this kind of earth tone color scheme is really flattering and cool. I wore this jacket all weekend, so it really just took a little bit of personality and customization to make this jacket fully mine. So for the perfect cool Valentine's Day girl look, I have this cutie shirt which I cropped to make more my own. Next I put this shirt over top of a turtleneck, you know I love to do these layered looks. Plus, it adds warmth for the February months, and I think that color pulls from the jacket and it makes everything look really cute. I paired this with a navy skirt and muted socks, just so it would go with the muted theme. And then I'm wearing Creeper Mary Janes. I think this look is super cute, super romantic, super February in the city, and I really love how it turned out. The customized patch on the jacket really just pulls it together and I feel like it's all my own and not something super trendy that you would see everywhere, but customized and mine again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and following along. I'll link all the indie creators in the bio. And if you like videos like this, don't be shy. Let me know. What would you like to see next? February and Valentine's Day is really one of my favorite, favorite months. so. I'd love to bring you more of my favorite videos and styling tips. Anyway, thank you guys so, so, so much. If it's your first time here, subscribe and check out some of these looks on my Instagram as well at QuietCoolKid. Happy Valentine's Day.